evening. Happy Monday to you all. Welcome. Hope your day's gone well. Um, beautiful sunny day here. 14 degrees. Yay. <laughs> the most excitement in ages. Um, it was absolutely stunning today. So I hope you had sun wherever you, you were. And yeah, looking forward to seeing um, Jackie tonight. We've got uh, Jackie Marson joining us again for um yeah for our um monday night live so you hopefully you tuned in before so i think it was about three weeks ago jackie joined us and we talked about her book the curse of lovely if you haven't um seen this yet and are curious i highly recommend this so last so the, when we spoke to jackie before we were talking more about um how to say no and um yeah and and break free from the demands of others and particularly around making more time but what i um what when we were talking we were um, discussing around um, the area of um going back into you know our our normal life again and you know the area around sort of, you know how we were feeling and you know i know personally <laughs> i'm feeling a bit sort of anxious about going back into groups again going back into an office how's that going to go into work so I know we've all in different situations. So for some people, we've carried on our normal lives. You know, if you're a key worker, you've been, you know, it probably doesn't feel much different in, in some respects. But other people have been working from home. But in a way, we've all had to deal with so many different changes. It actually reminds me of the, the time when I lived abroad and literally going to, you know, a new country with new customs and a new culture. And having to have this, you know, period of, of, of adapt, you know, adapting and then coming back to the UK and then kind of returning back to how things were here. So I'm I'm almost feeling it's a little bit like that. So I'm really keen to pick Jackie's brains once again. She is absolutely fabulous, has a great toolbox of tips and techniques. So I'm really excited to hear more about you know what her tips would be for us to go back into you know normal life with confidence i also discovered about jackie that she is or many years ago she was also a reporter in war zones so she's got this kind of you know all these different life experiences that i'm sure she'll she will share with us tonight so i am going to bring her on and if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to ask, I've obviously got my own. <laughs> Feel free to pop some links in the in the comments. Hello. <laughs> ah, Rebecca. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Lovely to be here. No, oh, no. Thank you so much for joining us again. It's a number two. <laughs> yes. The more the merrier. I love it. Oh, I thought, well, we touched the last time we talked about your, your wonderful book and you gave us lots of tips and techniques for um, managing that period of homeschooling. And, um, yeah, just obviously all the demands of, of yeah, how we say no during a pandemic. Um, but well, we also sort of touched upon, um, you know, anxiety and just how how we might be feeling when we're going back into normal life again. So I just... So yeah, I'm very. I'm looking forward to hearing some more techniques and more ideas that you. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to I can try to give you different, new and different ones. Absolutely, yeah. So, so yeah, I, so I wondered, you know, what kind of challenges you, from your kind of experience as a as a coach already, have you? What have you sort of come across? What you think that people will be anticipating going back to? Um, well, like you said so beautifully about when you came back from your time abroad, it is a period of re-entry and you can liken it to times in your life before when maybe you've been off work with a long illness, any woman who's had a maternity leave, you know, and, and think not only, oh, okay, I'm feeling anxious because I'm going back, but also what helped me then? because you know, that's where we find what are our strengths and our resiliences. And it can make us feel more confident to think, okay, I got, I got through that re-entry. How will I get through this re-entry? And, and in a way, the great thing about this re-entry is that everyone is in the same boat. Or as you once said to me, Rebecca, same sea, different boats. <laughs> because some are wrestling little dinghies, some are wrestling even cruise ships. We have our different versions of the boat, don't we? But um, yeah. I think 
there is a lot of a sort of mass anxiety around like <gasps> what what will it look like how am I going to be do I even want to go back I, you know many people have fears of of illness of still like is it safe out there covid wise so that's sort of one area let alone I think for me and you and many of my clients it's more a sort of form of social anxiety um mm. I can't you know how will I cope with a group of people I've only spoken to my husband and kids and people on the phone and zoom for almost a year you know that's such a long and we've become so acclimatized to that that we are frightened it's as simple as that so like you know all mm. fear experiences it is about taking it one step at a time you know small safe steps how do we best soothe ourselves keep ourselves feeling safe and yet at the time little pushing ourselves little bit at a time out of our comfort zone the thing we dread just kind of feel the fear and do it anyway and then I can share some techniques of, of sort of how you get through those moments but almost you know with each moment you will get braver you, you might yeah. you know yeah. pair soon we're going to be able to meet six people outside aren't we I think that's is that the 28th of March I think it is so it's almost yeah. like yeah. if you have to go back to an office in April or May do a few of those meetings of six or something just to get back your talking muscle and your social interaction muscle muscles mm -hmm. um and that will build up your confidence or mm, i don't know you know take a trip on the bus or the tube go some up do maybe your work journey a few times i don't know there's you know you have mm -hmm. to think of your own solutions but it is it's about that really yeah yeah no absolutely so it's, it's really just taking small steps um at a time really rather than just imagining I know, for example, I've got a wedding in August, which I'm thinking it's going to be about 200 people at, at this wedding, you know. <laughs> and it's sort of going from three of us at home to 200 people does feel quite a stretch, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's... it's. But I think... I, I wonder if there's sort of any any thoughts around just the, the thinking of it, because it's almost as though, you know, your mind goes from one extreme to another. Like, I'm trying to anticipate August already, you know, yeah. in my mind going to work so is it so any sort of in terms of managing even the thoughts around that is there anything that we can do yeah. to calm no of course because that's classic as a psychologist my main model is cbt cognitive behavioral therapy and there mm. you're talking about both behaviors how you do it behavioral experience like change what you do but then the cognitive bit is about identifying and challenging your thoughts because our brains are crazy and they play such tricks on us and what they're telling us is really the truth so it's a great example you've given it's like you know august is so far away and yet you've gone to like <gasps> oh my goodness 200 people how will i cope da, 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 da. and that is what the anxious mind does it's never in the moment because we can't feel anxious in the moment really because we're in the moment that's that's what mindfulness is about being with each breath in the moment when there is no anxiety anxiety is always about worrying what might happen in the future and mm -hmm. the bigger the worry because of whatever it touches in us we go to these crazy thoughts and ideas and images often which are called mm -hmm. catastrophized thinking so it's about yeah. catastrophe yeah. So I don't know what yours is around the wedding, but mine might be, oh, I don't know what it is. I, you don't have to share that with us. because. But often, you see, when you speak them out loud, they're mm. ridiculous. They are crazy. I can tell you one of mine, a long-standing one. Like, you know, yeah. it's amazing I'm on an Instagram Live because I have become a real technophobe. And mm. as soon as something goes wrong on my computer, like I can't send an email or something freezes, I immediately feel my shoulders go right up, tension straight into my body. And I have learned to identify the catastrophe thought and image is and this you know please laugh at this that i am in the old an old people's home well into the future and we're on yeah. iphone 99 holograms or something you know ridiculous and mm -hmm. because i haven't forced myself to keep up with technology i'm surrounded by all these kind of cruel <laughs> care home assistants and no one will help me get in touch with my boys and i'm going please I help me with <laughs> and everyone's ignoring me and I can't get in touch with my boys so I'm isolated and I, I can't reach them so that's my and that's straight wow. to the, yeah. and an email I won't send so that's what we do and identifying it and maybe writing it down or speaking it to a friend they are all almost always 
ludicrous. So we can then bring humor to them. Go like, well, what is that going to happen? Why is that going to happen? And I can say to myself, okay, as my son will say, we say, we have this saying in my family, turn your anxiety into action, which is a great one. Mm, they like yeah, to be that. Be there. Well, if I'm really worried, I've got to go on a few courses to increase or uh, ask people like you who are, you know, younger than me. Oh, Rebecca, how do I use Instagram? And as I get better at Instagram, well, then maybe, you know, I found 99 holograms. I'll be yeah, zooming it. I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so there are usually solutions, but we need to be in the calm. We can't be triggered into our anxiety. That's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Calm problem solving they're different bits of the brain i think i talked about this last time the amygdala yeah. the old brain gets triggered when we are anxious it goes eh, 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 like a car alarm and you go into panic and it blocks the oxygen going to your prefrontal cortex and other bits of the brain that that do the rational thinking and the problem solving so again should i yeah. should i do the breathing tip i can't say the breathing enough can i really <laughs> No, well, I, I was very impressed. If, if anyone had seen on Instagram today, I shared your, your video from the, the Polish interview. And it's just brilliant how, you know, in that moment of, you know, high stress, you take a breath and then you confidently, um, you know, to answer the question or answer what you think the question yes. was. So if you haven't seen that on my Instagram, do have a look or look on Jackie's because it's it's just Brilliant. But I, so, wasn't, yeah, I, I wasn't exaggerating when I told that story last time, really, was I? The, <laughs> I am triggered. My, you can see my face. I'm kind of frozen. I gulp, don't I? Yeah. And I'm just thinking, oh, my goodness, I don't know what they asked me. And then I do a deep breath and I think, just say something. You know, they probably asked you this. Just say something. And then what maybe more importantly, I thought the solution going forward, because that interview was going to last five or ten minutes, um, so I realized the camera was never on me when they were asking questions. So I had to look at the ground and listen to this simultaneous translation in my ear so I could understand what the next question, the questions going forward were. So yeah. not only did I have a solution in the moment, I had a, a, a forward going solution. So mm. it, it is quite funny. Every time I watch it, I think, oh, that, that felt like a week that I didn't say anything. <laughs> you know, it felt like hours. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it didn't come across at all but yeah so it's just the, again it's the power of the of breathing isn't it in those moments just to calm calm yourself down and then you can respond confidently exactly exactly so these moments after coming out of lockdown we'll be going to meet more people maybe we will be going to the office whatever the thing is We'll feel anxious. We'll probably feel anxious getting ready, getting dressed, wearing more clothes than we, you know, better clothes, smarter clothes than we've worn for ages. That might make us anxious. So it's like, okay, breathe through that. And then you leave the door. I forgot my keys. Have I left the gas on? Breathe through that. And breathe in your walk to the public transport all the time. It's like in for three, out for five. Bring your attention to your stomach. All mm. of those mindful or, you know, yoga, slowing the breath techniques are just brilliant. They're so powerful, as I think you know, don't you? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think actually that even talking about that makes me feel really calm. You know, just thinking about breathing <laughs> before going into all of these situations. We've got that, that power of the breath can make such a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And should we talk about... I, I, um, get one in mm. one of my favorite sort of cognitive ones about using your your thinking mm. um uh which i think you really like but again i had forgotten to do it for ages so there's this technique called the dependable strengths inventory yeah and in fact the, the wonderful newcastle couple you had on last week mm. the guy was talking about he uses this app called three good things a day or three things a day mm. which is mostly about gratitude but it's I made these notebooks for people to clients to keep about 10 years ago, which was also called three good things a day, but it was about yourself. And so you just do this as an exercise. You make two columns in a notebook or something. And in the first one, you put events and you at least one a day at the end of the day, remember at least one event, something you did that you were proud of. And it could be tiny, like I cooked the tea or I bought some flowers, or I answered that difficult email well. And then in the second column, you write my qualities and you think of your strengths, your qualities that show. So the cooking might be, I'm calm under pressure, 
or I'm creative or I'm loving to my family, whatever feels genuine to you. And then you build that up over time. And then in times of what I would call wobble, anxiety, lack of confidence, you read your dependable strengths inventory, basically the list of your dependable strengths. And it's very empowering because you think, oh, I am those things. Because if you wrote them and you believe them, no one can take them away from you. You know, it wasn't like someone else telling you, oh, Rebecca, you're very compassionate. You're very creative. You're... You need yeah. to write them for yourself. And that is yeah. very powerful. And I think good at a time like this when we need to find our strengths and resiliences to get back out there. Mm. I love that. I remember when I had a, a coaching session with you and I, I remember it was about going back abroad, actually flying for the first time since I'd had Alfie. So I hadn't been abroad for three years. And for someone who loved travel when I was younger, that was part of my makeup. So suddenly to go abroad again. And I remember being at the airport and just things moved on so much in those few years, you know, just everything was, you know, all the check-in was different, you know, it was all automated and there wasn't anyone to speak to. And I felt a real kind of fish out of water. And I thought that this is part of my identity. And now, um, so I remember doing that exercise when I got back. And then I broke down all the things about that going abroad. You know, it came back with so many things. And it, and I, it kind of stays with me today that just by doing that exercise. So I, it's a really powerful exercise. I, I remember, remember that because I can't remember where you, did you go somewhere like somewhere in Scandinavia, like Denmark or something? Yeah, it was Oslo. Oslo. Yeah, and you Oslo, did an yeah. amazing problem solving. You are such a great creative problem solver. So you something like you couldn't afford the boat trip, but you found this way of doing a reasonable boat trip on a ferry. Well, I don't know, something, it was really creative. Is that yeah. right? It was so expensive. We were on a budget. Probably the worst place to go. Yeah. On a budget. <laughs> <laughs> anyway but uh, but yeah brilliant ex i absolutely love that exercise i thought that was um really powerful and you do and, and it does stay with you and i think all the things that we're going through at the moment when we do go back to them we've got a whole you know we've got so much kind of resilience we've got extra resilience from all the things that we've been through and the fact we go back to these situations again with kind of new zest and yes new insights about ourselves so it's in a way, do, do you think, you know, we have changed as a human race through all of this? Well, oof, who knows? I think we'll only discover that down the line. You know, there's so mm. much talk about a wake up to the planet and we're going to be better and kinder. And, you know, I feel like we've been in this position before and everyone has that hope and then it doesn't really happen. But yeah. I, I am an optimist. I would hope it would. But I think just on an individual level, what is great is exactly what you say to Again, write that down. In you. It doesn't have to be three good things a day. Write them now about almost like what I've learned about myself in lockdown and skills, maybe new skills or old skills I've rediscovered. So for me, like I've, I've done quite well for me in tech because I've been Zooming and sending links and I've learned Instagram and that is, that's good for, for me with my technophobia. So I think, you know, there's, People have so many, that you will have so many of your own versions, but we just have to recognize them. And sometimes it, 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 people get so shy around this. It's like, it's very un-British to say like, I'm good at this, so I'm proud of this. So if you're really stuck, and I've been in roomfuls running workshops where people will go, put their hands up and go, I've got nothing, you know? <laughs> and I, people are so glad. <laughs> you know, I used to do this group at Holloway Prison and the women, the prisoners will go like, be quite angry to start with and go, oh, miss, how could you get us to do this? You know, I'm a drug addict. I've lost my kids. I've got 10 years. Of course, I've got nothing to be proud of. And I'm like, OK, has anyone else got any suggestions for X? And then someone would mm. always say something like, she's, she's, a, she's, um, she's trying to change because she's here. She's come to the group. Yeah. How brave is that? And and she couldn't then deny that it was true because she sat in the group. And then everyone would sort of clap and cry. And <laughs> towards oh, the end, yeah. it was amazing, so empowering. So sometimes ask a friend, ask a family member, say, oh, what do you think I'm good at? Or what have I been good at in the pandemic, in the lockdown? And people, mm -hmm. good friends will help you. And then you have to let those things in and think, oh, yes, I am quite good at that. Because we, we, we're, you know, especially as women, we're so taught to be modest, aren't we? And go, oh, no, I'm no good at that. And it's like, no, no, let mm. it.
And actually, Rebecca, sorry, I'm going, but the other thing mm. that goes with that exercise of doing the dependable strengths inventory is mm. picking an image either of something like like maybe a, a celebrity or an actress or, or a role or something from your own backlog of photographs where you felt at your strongest and put yes. it there on your front mm. screensaver on your phone pin it on the wall in your wallet somewhere where you're going to see it and um when you are feeling anxious wobbling look mm. at that photo and think that's me at my best that's who i am i'm still yeah. there in fact, that image you posted to advertise tonight of me on the wall. <laughs> I've segued into that. I don't have a chance of boasting about my war, war zones. But that image is framed on my wall because I love that image because, you know, I, oh, I, I, I just feel so powerful in it. And I was happy. I was so happy on that horse. Um, that gives me strength to look at that, yeah. that image and think I can do whatever this thing that's, that I think I can't do make a difficult phone call, you know, have a difficult conversation. I look at that image and think, look, if you could do that, you could do, you can do anything. That's, that's amazing. Like, that's why I posted that, you know, you obviously you sent me the picture, but I think it's such a powerful image. And, you know, and like you say, I, I'd never thought of doing that before. And I think that could be really powerful during this time is to find something, you know, if we are feeling a bit wobbly and that we can look at and it just, all the memories flood back of that experience that experience yeah so i think whilst you your so your experience of <laughs> being a reporter in war zones i mean i mean how how, how has that helped in in this this past year has it helped you to tell not, us all about it? not at all uh, <laughs> so interesting because as you know i am working on a second book which is about fear, anxiety. And my provisional, yeah, yeah. Fear, my provisional title is fear hyphen less, because that means both fearless, and I'd love to use that image on the cover, because the irony is I look so brave in that image, in a way, don't I? I've got the soldiers, I've got the horse, and I've got the flak jacket on. And I was very kind of fearless, but in a sort of what, um, Brené Brown would say this difference between a sort of bravado. I had so much bravado. And literally, I was in my 20s when many people go, oh, I think you feel a bit more invincible. But I never, well, not never, I rarely felt scared. I loved all my war experiences because I was usually with rebel armies. And I mean, it sounds awful, but, you know, I was, I loved that. I loved doing that. But at the same time, everything I wrote about in my first book, The Curse of Lovely, like people pleasing and being afraid to say no, being afraid to kind of speak my truth, that, that is real courage. And that, that's my ongoing journey. So what I, I kind of love about that is the juxtaposition of what appears to be such bravery, like the ultimate bravery of going to wars. But actually, even at that time, I probably wouldn't you know stand up to difficult people in my life gosh wow so in that situation you felt i mean did you feel fear when you were in those, those... sometimes yes i mean i mm. have been in places with in fact in that very situation that was the sandinista war in nicaragua in the mid 80s and when we went out with those troops we got lost in the they got lost in the jungle I didn't, oh, people love this story, Rebecca. I didn't change my knickers for a week. <laughs> I couldn't change any of my clothes. People, oh my God, a year didn't change her knickers for a week. <laughs> but I don't care about stuff like that. But it's the rainy season. We got rained on, soaked to the skin, and then baked in the sun. But none of that mattered to me. And they joked and they said, I couldn't keep up with the soldiers because they were so fitter than me. So they borrowed that horse from a farm for me because I also then could carry the camera gear that's what's in front of me the camera and um they joked and said if we get bombed you'll be the first to be bombed because you're higher up <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like oh no. okay but we didn't we well then, uh, it, it, it moments like that I'm a bit frightened there was a time in Pakistan we were shooting over our heads there was kind of gunfire going over a roof I we were hiding under so sheltering under so you know yes of course of course but 
mostly I was in a position of, I was bizarrely, I was in my comfort zone because I was being a, a journalist, which I'd trained to be. And I was with David Bailey, who's replied to my post, who I owned Wildcat Films with. He was a brilliant cameraman. And we were this team and we were both kind of quite fearless. But I'm, I, it's so interesting, that doesn't make me this brave person because, you know, as in The Curse of Lovely, there's this whole thing where I can't take items back to posh boutiques because I worry the shop assistants will be disapproving. So that right. is the same yeah. person. I tell those stories so that people don't think I'm some kind of, yeah, crazy, super brave woman. I'm human. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, that's incredible. I mean, what what you, what the experiences you've had. But like you say, it's, it's interesting how we're comfortable in some situations, but then not others. So what I might be comfortable with, you might not be and vice versa. So we all have our comfort zones, that, don't we? And that's what doing like the DSI helps you identify. Where are my strengths? I mean, probably people are listening and going, you know, like, I can't believe that woman can't take an item of clothing back. I probably, I probably could now. I've got better. But yeah. and they can do that easily. You know, they're probably buying five things and taking four of them back. <laughs> or, you know, whatever. They can have those difficult conversations with people. So, mm -hmm. but they couldn't uh, say no to their child or not, let, not buy them a second ice cream or not stop them coming into the Zoom call at the moment. Whatever. We all have our areas of challenge and our areas of strength. And it's recognising our areas of strength. And also, they're not any better or different. To any, they're just different. And yeah. that's the one yeah. of humanity. I was just thinking, I wrote, I wrote this down, mustn't forget it, part of that taking small steps going in our re-entry is so much about compassion to yourself and compassion to others mm. who are doing in other ways. I mean, you're big on yeah. that. I mean, you write it in your, you know, that's your bio. It's just, it's going to be key in this time. I, I think that's it, isn't it? It's, it's um, compassion, such a, a big thing. And, you know, if we're feeling, you know, good in a situation, it's just being really mindful that someone else might be struggling. So it's just, yeah, it's just being really aware of what everyone's going through and maybe not always tell you know not everyone's vocal either so it's just picking up isn't it you're trying to exactly and i think the understandings are happening already about di people's different levels of risk assessment and safety assessment around covid so if someone sort of backs away from you and and, and has got their mask on and goes oh two meters or whatever you mustn't be offended and think oh for god's sake you know we've all had the backs or whatever it's like Please, you know, respect everyone's yes, own, yeah. own feeling of what makes them safe. None of us are right or mm. wrong. It's just very individual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I think you're right. Compassion's key. And it's not just thinking from our own place, but also trying to put ourselves in the shoes of others, which is, is quite tough, isn't it? When you're all, we're all kind of in this together and we're all going through our own experiences. But it's just, if we're able to separate that and really see what's going on for the other person that's going to that's going to help them feel listened to and understood yes um, and then of yeah. course as soon as we actually we start thinking about others i mean this sounds a bit po-faced and moralistic because it's hard to do but when mm. we're in a place of anxiety we're totally self-obsessed i know i am you're going oh what do they think of me what am i going to say next and so we stop listening well and so if we really really try and focus on them not what am I going to, how am I going to answer? Am I going to look stupid? Is my makeup running? You know, if we really focus on them, it stops you being anxious about yourself. It really does. That's quite a good trick, yes. tip, trick. But, you know, we just get locked into our own doubts and anxiety and our own heads. Anxiety makes us very self-obsessed. Mm. Yeah, that explains it, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that explains it. <laughs> well, no, just <laughs> it. What, you're saying, what, all of us, yeah. I think like the last year, because I know that it's, it's weird because it, it's been sort of like you have been in sort of a little bit of a bubble, really. And and at some points, I think, oh, what about so and so? What if, you know, you almost forget your the outside world almost. And and I know that I've never experienced that before, so it's weird to be so insular in a way. Yeah. Yes, but I also get more comfortable. You then start 
able to you're able to give more and you're able to be there for others yes absolutely and that will just take a bit of practice getting back into that habit that muscle of that or if you've never done that mm. try it it is quite transformative because I did once I ran a, I ran a workshop about what is charisma how to get charisma which is a bit ridiculous because I don't think you can just get charisma but it was more about kind of quite you know basic helpful things that everyone can do and one of them is get out of your own head into into the person you're listening to because immediately the good listeners people like bill clinton who i he's a bit discredited now i think but <laughs> i met him once and that whole thing about how charismatic bill clinton is totally true because even though he shook my hand and talked three seconds me oh how are you you know i can't do the accent but he just makes you feel you're the only person in the room you know, and he had, was just shaking hands with a lineup of mostly women, all melting, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, we can like... all do that. You just, you know, get out of your own head and into the other person's. And it makes you charming. People go, like, oh, that amazing. I, I, it almost like makes you beginnings of what people call charismatic. And it's not yeah. that hard. It's a habit to develop. Brilliant. Yeah. No, they're, they're, these are brilliant, um, Jackie. I'm going to be going back through this. <laughs> Writing everything down. <laughs> no, it's fabulous. Uh, I was I was thinking also just around you know we talk about this area about being confident, and I'm thinking you know just I know at the moment just not being I know it sounds a very vain thing to say, but even just not going to the hairdressers for yeah, well, I haven't been to the hairdressers probably for about a year, <laughs> probably so, um, and you know just starting to put on weight, and you know your sort of self image is. And I know we shouldn't always feel bad for saying this because you know, there's, there's obviously so much more sort of serious things that are, that are going on out in, in the world at the moment. But it's just those things do affect your oh my confidence God. and your identity. You know, Rebecca, you are allowed to say that because you and every woman, every, oh, every man, I, sorry, I keep saying women and ignoring men. Okay, let's say every person. We've got a few men joins. <laughs> We are more judged by our appearance. We still are. And that is just a fact of life, really, isn't it? So there was, a t there was an article in the Times last Saturday, like almost a whole supplement about how we, it's terrible, how we've all put on five years, aged five years in lockdown. It talked about oh, wow. your, face, <laughs> your face, your brain. And, but actually, rather than being depressed, because I thought I have aged five years in lockdown. So I thought, oh, it normalised. I thought, oh, it's not just me, it's everyone. <laughs> and um, it, was quite, it was quite reassuring. And I read some of the tips and it was like, you know, get your brain back up to speed and, you know, maybe do, you know, a bit of change your diet, a bit more exercise, do some, do Sudoku every day. I don't know, it had loads of tips. But it was just, it, I thought we are all in this boat and we don't feel most people do not feel at their best which means we don't feel like our most confident and there's no easy answer it's like i've got my hair appointment for the 27th of april and i'm counting down the days yeah. and um <laughs> you know i've been going through my wardrobe a bit like what doesn't fit anymore what does I, I don't i don't really know what to say except it sort of you know have some trial runs and it's kind of, should we talk about should we talk about Wonder Woman now? Because I think Wonder Woman. Yes, go for Wonder Woman. We've got to get Wonder Woman in. We've got to get Wonder Woman. <laughs> so, um, and again, we could. I, I, I did. I don't know how to do my Instagram, but I did put at Amy Cuddy in that post I did about something or other. I've only done two posts so far, but so her name is Amy Cuddy. She's an American social psychologist. She's got a very well uh, TED talk. Um, Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y. So have a look at that. Uh, so she did lots of experiments where she took saliva samples from a whole range of people before and after. She asked them to stand in a power pose for two minutes. Now, two mm. minutes is actually a really long time if you time it on your phone. It's much longer than you think. And power poses can be anything like you can have, you know, but it's it's a strong pose. And my favorite, because it's, funny and it's easy to remember is Wonder Woman where Wonder Woman stands with her legs up slightly apart hands on her hips and then kind of draw your head up and feel feel brave and oh I should have come on tonight in my Wonder Woman I've got a Wonder Woman <laughs> that I wear on come out after the coffee break going who am I <laughs> just so people will remember it and anyway so Wonder Woman hands on hips 
Um, and Amy Cuddy reckons from all the saliva samples that your cortisol, which is one of the key hormones of stress, goes down by between 20 and 25%, which is a massive wow. amount. That's massive. Your testosterone in men and women, which she calls the confidence hormone, I'm not sure what I think about that, but anyway, that goes up by the same amount, 20 to 25%. So that's the chemistry of it. And her whole thing is, fake it till you become it because we used to think almost like you had to feel confident and then you could act confident she says act confident and you will feel confident because you're literally your body chemistry changes and my goodness it works it, uh, it really works so if you're at work and you've got to make, go into a meeting you know difficult meeting make a difficult phone call go go into the toilets because you probably don't want to do it in front of everyone stand in one <laughs> yeah. minute and maybe do the slow breathing as well. And at the same mm. time, look at your image of your, your powerful self. <laughs> do the whole lot. And yeah. you will feel stronger. Um, mm. So it's just, it's really, really powerful. So it's a great mm. tip. And, and anyone can do it. Not difficult. I, um, I remember actually a number of times I've done it when, I've <laughs> when I was uh, train, doing some training for... Uh, I worked at university and I had to go into a room for 30 you know, teenagers <laughs> and um, if I was especially one session I was, I was teaching them on social media which is the biggest joke <laughs> um, but I remember you know you doing that that pose and doing it at the toilet and it, it really does it does make a difference it really yeah the, it does the yeah. changes yeah Amy Cuddy is spot on with her research it's, but she's tested yeah. thousands of people it's pretty I think you know sort of um solid research mm, yeah no so that's that's a great so I think breathing power poses um, I know before you've talked about positive affirmations as well oh, yes oh yes no. that thank you for reminding me so I was thinking actually when I said about be compassionate to yourself it's something like be your own cheerleader so you know I can do this, Rebecca, you can do this. You've done this before, you know, but you've got this covered or whatever, so, you know, so, or it might be one that classically affirmations, you need to put them on your mirror and look in the mirror and say it every morning or three times a day. I used to not believe in affirmations. I'm a big believer in it now, really. Again, really? that okay. makes new neural pathways in the brain. So often what we do, if we go out post lockdown into this new situation we'll be going like come on we'll be talking harshly to ourselves like maybe people from our past used to be it parents or teachers or coaches or sports coaches we'll be going come on jackie you know pull yourself together you can do this grow up you're a you know blah, blah. i don't know with not a nice tone and and that is not helpful we we kind of think it is like pull yourself together mm. so it, but the kindness and the voice of compassion the kind of stroking tone or what your best cheerleader would do you've got to be your best cheerleader and it's like come on we can do this I can, you can do this use your own name probably not out loud because people will look at you but again you know before you leave home come on you know come on jackie come on rebecca you this is good. you can do this It'd be great and then after you've done it again that first day out in the world come back and go jackie rebecca you did you did really well today you're doing really well mm -hmm. and maybe reward yourself with some you know, go and buy yourself that nice chocolate or go home and have a bubble bath, whatever. It's really important. Yeah, yeah, so it's self-compassion. I might skip the chocolate, though, because that's the thing that I'm trying to <laughs> have less of at the moment. But definitely it's, the bubble bath. <laughs> or have strawberries. Absolutely. Well, it's hopefully uh, Wimbledon season <laughs> at some point this year, so... Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Yeah, so just having affirmation, self-compassion. I think these are all really valuable. And I think this is such good timing bringing you on tonight because I think, you know, hopefully over the next months, fingers crossed, that we'll start sort of integrating back into society again. So we should be able to socialise. We will bounce back. We will bounce back. Most, but not, not everyone. I think that's another point that if you really are struggling and you have you know, something you feel is like OCD or you, and it's got worse or genuine, you know, real social anxiety. The mental health services are gearing up for, to, to give a lot of help, like seek help. Mm. 
you know, go to your GP, just, just tell them. And, you know, hopefully they can get you six sessions of CBT or something, even online, you know, there's a lot of CBT online, which people might think, oh, how's that going to help me? But I think it's, it's definitely better than nothing. It's only a version of the stuff I'm saying, you know, and um, mm -hmm. it's like every little helps. Mm, definitely. And I think the thing I've learned during this period is, is really finding someone to talk to and, yeah. you know, just really opening up how you're feeling. Because um, I know personally I like to go away and fix things myself, but really it's, it's, it's about just have, trusting someone who can share your what you are feeling uncomfortable and vulnerable about, however silly it might sound, but it's just having that person that you can Absolutely. really talk to. Again, Brené Brown, another of my great, you know, heroines. Um, I think yours too. Millions yes, love Brené Brown. Um, she always says, because her whole research base is about shame, so she's like, speak your shame, but speak it to a trusted person. Because yes. if, if not a trusted person, and then they kind of, mock you for it. it's like oh for goodness sake you're very sensitive or god no i don't do that 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 just makes it worse but to speak it to trusted personal people kind of takes it away or normalize it it's then it's not just me yes yeah yeah you you do need that don't you and it you know just finding the right person that you can be yourself and however small something you sound you know it will it will make a difference won't it just having that person you know because sometimes actually psychologically knowing you've got that person even if you yes. don't <laughs> you, you have conversations with them in your head without mm. before you can get to talk to them or whatever that's yeah that's, what that's would next say? and they'll say oh you poor thing or you know but don't worry you're not alone with that and you're yeah. great you know i love you and da, 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 and, and yeah that's so the cheerleading yeah <laughs> do you know the other thing i was going to say that i i found slightly interesting um so we've just got a couple more minutes but just um thing I was to point out was um i think with the last say even like the last month you know with easter oh, things are starting to open up for easter i found actually slightly because we've not really had any choice over the last you know we've had limited choices of what we can do and i know just a week ago i was i had sort of options for easter of different clubs that i can sign my my son up to and I actually became quite overwhelmed with choice um, maybe almost like had no choice and suddenly um and also in a way like we've had we haven't had to compare there's been no compare and despair of ways that i've learned from you jackie um oh because everyone's kind of in the same boat and everyone's doing the same thing whereas almost we're going to go back to these things we're going to have so much choice I, i'm again, being very optimistic here but it will happen at some point yeah but, but we'll have all this choice and then suddenly you know people will be doing things that are more exciting than us so we will go back into the the compare and despair so there has been some interesting, you know, I suppose we've adapted so much to this, this more sort of simplified way yeah. of living. And it was just quite an interesting observation how yeah. I actually felt quite overwhelmed by choice. And I yeah. wonder if that's something. Yeah. And that, Rebecca, you are brilliant because that's, that's almost like, you know, I made some points that I wanted to kind of try and cover. That's the last one on my list. And I'd kind of forgotten about it, but you reminded me. So it was about... I mean, we could talk to, we'll talk again another time, maybe about FOMO and fear of missing out and comparing yes. to next so topic. Topic, but <laughs> very, very, very human. But I was thinking, I was just talking to my neighbor about an hour ago over the fence. And she said, oh, I, you know, I don't want to go back to that hectic social life I led. It's really nice having no social pressures. And I thought, I said to her, yeah, you know, I said, I just recently said to my husband, I never want to go out again in the evening because I so like having supper, watching telly, going to bed early. <laughs> and, and he was like, oh, <laughs> <Good night's sleep. laughs> but I was thinking, I'm not, it's not directly addressing your thing about choice being overwhelming, which is maybe, but it's more about what I said to her was, how can we hold on? I think we've got to find ways to hold on to the parts of lockdown that we have really enjoyed more than our previous lives. And so it's like, she shouldn't overbook herself for seven nights a week because she's a woman of mad social world. Maybe I don't, because I was saying like, 
I don't ever want to go to the theatre again. It, it ends too late. <laughs> past your bedtime. But yes, past my new bedtime. And she said, oh, you can go to matinees. And I thought, oh, I can go to matinees. Which yes. like a Sunday or even a Wednesday. And uh, so maybe I will do that. And maybe I really don't want to go. Maybe I want to stick to my new early bedtime, mostly. I mean, I don't think we want to become rigid and stuck in things we're scared of. That's a, that's different. That's back to what we were talking about at the beginning. You've got to come out of your comfort zone a bit, but also really think about what have I really liked. And but then part of that is you can't then have FOMO and compare, compare and despair. If I'm not going out any nights because I want to go to bed early, I can't then start getting envious of my friends and thinking, oh, I've got no social life. I've got to be honest about my choices. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't answer your question about the overwhelmingness of choice. I just think that's the thing. You've got to be gentle with yourself and think cho new choice is going to be overwhelming. Just be, just take it slowly and be kind, you know, mm. but yeah. Mm, yeah, let's all really try and step away from the compare and despair because it hurts no one. And just remember everyone is human like us and under the facades of what they're posting or whatever, those images, they are human. They struggle. They feel anxious. They feel all the emotions we all feel. No mm. one's life is perfect. You know, it really isn't. Mm. You have to remember that, don't you, really? So have to remember. Mm. Yeah. I think, in a way, we've built this this real sort of human side over the last year. We've just seen people that we've never seen them before. We've seen inside their homes like we've never seen before. You know, so I think people have opened up and shown this this side of themselves and i just hope that that continues in a way and that that sort of the compare and despair gets easier <laughs> i mean that's still human at the end of the day i guess <laughs> one we come out of this with more sense of our shared humanity yes Long yeah wouldn't that. be wonderful fantastic well, thank you so much. I absolutely love talking to you again. I think we've got more topics to cover in the coming months. We have. <laughs> we're up for it. <laughs> but I've loved it. Brilliant hearing about your, your experiences and sort of years ago as well. And, um, you know, with the war zones and just, you know, just how you, how you manage that. I mean, it's so inspiring. And... <laughs> Um, and, and the very personal things that you've shared with us as well. <laughs> I'll never look at you in the same way again, Jackie. <laughs> so thank you so much for all your, you know, your sort of openness as well and, and all the tips and, oh, there's just so much um, that we, you know, that you you touched upon that I think is actually going to help us to, to go back and feel confident and just take, like you say, sort of small steps um, and, you know, just small steps, compassion, breathing, you know, there's, I, I just feel calm talking to you. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Good girl, out there in the world, back into the world. <laughs> well, Good. thank you for joining and hope you've enjoyed. It's been fantastic, your... Rebecca. I love talking to you. It's great. You're, yeah, like, likewise. And um, yeah, I'm brilliant. So, so impressed with the technology. It's just worked perfectly <laughs> So, another tip for your box I know. <laughs> ish better better i'm improving every day i'm improving that's a good affirmation yeah <laughs> okay brilliant well look forward to seeing you again soon we'll come up with another topic but thank you for everyone that's been watching tonight and um yeah it was great to to um ex can't what I was gonna say um yeah to share this topic with you and to um yeah, and remember Jackie's book as well. So if you, um, Jackie's got lots of YouTube videos. If you want to see more of her Polish interviews. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> and um, then obviously The Curse of Lovely, which is an absolute brilliant read. But yeah, thanks for joining us and I'll see you all again soon. Bye. Have a nice evening. <laughs>